Sports Nigeria's representative in the CAF Confederation Cup, Inugu Rangers, has started the group phase campaign with a 2-0 victory over the Salitas FC of Burkina Faso. The Flying Antelopes wasted no time in showing their intent as Godwin Aguda scored the opener in the first minute. The Vistas had their moments and tried to level up, but in the 60th minute, Isaac Lote converted a free kick to double the lead of the home team. Coach Lugwenga Gubote's team are presently on a seven-match on beaten run in the competition and will meet to meet inside CS Bastian in their next match. He put the ball on the plate with his right foot and slammed it into the net with his left, his stronger foot. And 1-0 up, Rangers International, very early in the game. It was 59 seconds on the clock when he put that ball in. And then... Salitas came back strong into the game, a fantastic effort that time. The goalkeeper, Nana Bonsu, equal to the task. Also, didn't like what he saw at all from the man that is making his debut. This is the second goal, Isaac Lute. Fantastic free kick, left-footed. And he took a bang off the post. On match day six, the Nigeria Professional League MFM beat Wiki Taurus 1-0 in Group A at the Egege Stadium, courtesy of Chijoke Akuneto's 69th minute goal, while Iimba beat Rivers United 2-0. Sunshine Stars squeezed past Rummer Stars 2-1, while Casino United defeated Niger Tornadoes 3-1. In Group B, El Kanami Warriors beat Yobe Desert Stars 2-1, while Akar United secured their first win this season after beating Go Around 3-0 with goals from Christopher Lolo and Defreka F. Young and Ubong Friday. Elsewhere, Kano Pillars hammered Nassau United 3-0, while Gumbe United and Plata United played out a goalless draw. Hotland edged past Kata Stars 3-2 in five, a five-goal thriller in Oweri as the Nays Millionaires' fun continued. Well, Abia Warriors pulled off a big upset after beating frontrunners, defying about 2-1 in Newi. The plane carrying football, uh, footballer Emiliano Sala and his pilot has been found following a sonar search with both occupants missing and presumed dead. The specialist seabed search for the missing plane began off the coast of Guernsey today and located the wreckage this morning on the seabed of the English Channel. Families of both men have been informed of the discovery. Both the Air Accident Investigation Branch, Geo Ocean 3 vessel and a private boat, which includes a side scan sooner, were used to try and find the aircraft. Manchester United extended their unbeaten run under interim boss Earl Garner uh, to 10 games with a narrow victory over Leicester City at the King Pass Stadium. Marcus Rashford continued his goal-scoring form, securing the winning goal in the ninth minute. Elsewhere, defending champions Manchester City defeated Arsenal 3-1 in a one-sided game at the Etihad Stadium. Argentine forward Sergio Aguero scored a hard trick for Pep Guardiola's men to reduce Liverpool's lead at the top to two points. However, the Reds will play against West Ham tomorrow. Minister of Youth and Sports Solomon Dalong believes having more marathons in Nigeria can be a productive way of engaging and empowering the youth of the country. Using the Lagos City Marathon as a model, the minister confirmed the event is getting better and charged more states to get involved. Gideon Goyet, who finished 14th overall, emerged the first male Nigerian to cross the finish line, while Deborah Pam won the prize for the first female. And the most interesting aspect of it is that 80% of the population are quite a younger generation, including even school children, meaning that the youth have taken ownership of this marathon. And the challenge we are going to have for sports development is that we cannot risk at any point to discontinue this marathon because we are going to receive a serious reaction from these younger people that are already building the culture and the tradition of this marathon.
And thousands of people living in and around Australia's Townville city are being warned there will be unprecedented flooding following the opening of dam gates as monsoon rains continue. The Bureau of Meteorology said there would be risks to life and, and property as the dam gates serving the Ross River were open to their full setting. Rains in the state of Queensland, where the Townsville is located, has swollen the river dam beyond its capacity. Townsville has received more than a metre of rain in just a week, which is more than 20 times the average for the time of the year, beating the previous record set in 1998 in what has become known as the Night of Noah. Indian officials have made a diplomatic protest against the United States after 129 Indian students were arrested for enrolling in a fake university known as the University of Farmington. The school had been advertised as based in Michigan State, which uh, was run by undercover agents from the Department of Homeland Security to expose what they termed pay-to-stay immigration fraud. Well, prosecutors argue that those who enrolled in the facility knew it would be illegal. The Indian Ministry of External Affairs on Saturday issued a protest to the U.S. Embassy in Delhi expressing concern over the arrests and demanded consular access to those detained. Well, the fake university had been set up in 2015 to try to catch foreign nationals who had initially traveled to the U.S. on student visas and wanted to stay in the country. Protests have been going on outside the Metropolitan Detention Center, a federal facility in Brooklyn, New York, led by friends and relatives of inmates stuck in cells without power or heat. Many inmates have not been able to contact the outside world for days following a partial power failure, which worsens conditions for them as temperatures dropped in many U.S. states during the week. Well, temperatures are said to have dropped in some cells to as low as 9.5 degrees Celsius. A Democrat lawmaker in the House of Representatives says it is like living in a closet without lights. Officials say the power failure is a result of the fire that destroyed an electrical panel the fire melted a switch designed to turn on a backup generator. According to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, officials are working to restore power as quickly as possible. And the main news again. Leaders from six geopolitical zones of the country today adopted Atiku Bubaka as their preferred candidate for the presidency. Also today, Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Imoti Bajo, held a special Thanksgiving service in Lokota a day after surviving a helicopter crash in Kaba, also in Kogi State. And residents of Australian city Townsville have been warned of the risk to life after unprecedented flooding that could affect up to 20,000 homes. I'd like to remind you on a programming note that we'll be bringing to you a repeat broadcast of the NNPC's Spud Inn of Coleman River Well 2. It was a flag of dawn by President Mohamed Jabouari. It took place in Boti on Saturday. That's NNPC's Spud Inn of Coleman River Well 2. This will be showing only on our DSTV platform. And also our terrestrial platform as well. We'd like to thank you so much for watching the news at 10 tonight. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Have a good night.